In the far corners of the world, there are unexplainable things, things we can't even fathom. Today we're looking at documented cryptid events in history, some popular, some on the fringe. Some aren't even here, dog. Cryptids are creatures or beings unexplainable by science, rejected by most, but studied by few. Rebel, I heard you might have something not of this world to share with us. Some would say it's otherworldly. I had to search for this. I wanted to find a cryptid that was so hidden and locked away and not too many people knew about. I found something that piqued my interest. I'm talking about the Salyut 7, not the space station, specifically the Angels of Salyut 7. Sounds like a porno. <laughs> should see him. Let me break it down because a lot of people probably don't know anything about the Salyut 7 itself. Going way back to like the 1980s, the Soviet Union existed. The Soviet Union existed. Obviously they hate America, America hates them. And they're having the whole space race beforehand in the 70s. But the Soviets have their own space station going around in space. The famous one is called MIR, M-I-R. It is the first modular space station to ever exist. Before that, the precursor to the MIR station is the Salyut 7. Now, the Salyut 7 has had quite a famous history, specifically being there had to be a huge rescue mission of two guys going up there and saving the whole station from collapsing and falling down. But that's not what we're getting into. What we're getting into are the beings that they saw up in space. So in 1984, a team was up in space in the Salyut 7 doing work, studying the Earth, studying space, seeing what was around and whatnot. Specifically, there were three of them, three cosmonauts that were up there. These cosmonauts were just looking out the window one day and they see an orange mist smoke coming at them, surrounding their ship in space, by the way, remind you, there's nothing there, but they're in space and there's this orange smoke starts filling and surrounding their area. As they're looking out the window, they get blinded by a bright light. As they look into this light, what they see, they cannot believe. The light that they're seeing, they see human-like beings that are emitting this light. Their entire body is encompassed of this light that's being shown off. And it is bright. Like I said, it blinded them for a minute. They had to adjust their eyes to see what these things were. But it gets creepier. So these beings, when looking at them, they saw a human face. Astronauts saw basically a person smiling back at them, almost like a, a nice presence. They were benevolent beings, is what the cosmonauts quote unquote said about them. But there were some obvious differences than other just being human and emitting this bright light. The beans were 20 meters tall. Now, I don't know if you guys know meters that well, but that 60 feet tall, which obviously we're not that. It's very, very large. They also had halo figures above their heads, almost like it was floating there, but it was still attached to their body. And then they also had long, long wings. Their wings were huge. The cosmonauts basically described when their wings were fully out, it was like a jetliner. Basically what I'm saying is they got them Boeings up in space. Twin Towers. Yikes. <laughs> but like I was saying before, the cosmonauts said these creatures were very benevolent. They were very nice. They were very welcoming and they did not harm these cosmonauts at all. And now you could probably be thinking, hey, these cosmonauts are probably, you know, delirious. They've been up in space forever. They've been kind of not on Earth and probably feeling some effects. But 12 days later, another crew went up there. Three more cosmonauts went up to the space station. And then the same events started happening. These are different cosmonauts. These were three different cosmonauts that came from Earth all the way up to that space station in the same events. So now there's six people inside that space station that are all witnessing the same creatures. So you can't really say that people's like it's mass hysteria because multiple people are seeing it at multiple different times. Now, I don't know if you guys know anything about the Soviet Union, but they pretty much banned religion. 
and all these beans that what they're making it sound like is very very specific to angels do you think space is like heaven no no <laughs> The cosmonauts told everything about this. They told the government, they're like, hey, this is going on up there. And I want you to know these were not some just like basic random people that were up in space. These were very highly intelligent people. I'm not going to dare butcher their names and do them a disservice because they don't deserve that. So when they came down to Earth and pretty much told everyone, hey, we saw this up there, the Soviet Union hid it from the public. They hit it for years. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you ever want to see your kids again, don't say a word about this. Is basically how they handled it. But eventually, as all secrets do, they do get leaked. So the world did end up hearing about this. The only thing is, they weren't the only ones that have seen these creatures. There's also been photos of these creatures. There's been photos that the Hubble telescope and the Soho telescope have taken. And I got pictures to show you. So this is a image from the Soho telescope. And as you can see, there's an image that looks similar, I would say to like a bird. There's multiple on there, but it looks like a bird with wings flying in phoenix. space. It could be a phoenix or it could be these creatures because space doesn't have really anything in it. It has everything and nothing. And when there should be nothing, there's something that's here in the shape of a bird or an angel, or a cryptid creature, angels. <laughs> Do you think these creatures are real? Do you think the Soviet Union made up a whole story and used propaganda for it? Or do you think these creatures are real? And two, do you think it influenced religion, specifically Christianity and Judaism and everything else that has angels? Those are big ifs, man. Um, That's a lot of big ifs. But there's definitely something out there by the sun, bro. I can see it with my own eyes right now. What if it's one of those uh, Thunderbirds? It's like it's sneezing or something. <laughs> it's dying. <laughs> with the Soviet Union being up in space for like the first time, they were basically setting a world record for the longest time being out there. Do you think it was aliens pretty much being like hey it's baby's first steps they finally got off the ground let's go be over there and see what's happening congratulate them it could be um what what if it's aliens and they're so advanced that they know what our representation of like serenity is it's an angel right the universal sign of like peace and serenity is maybe like an angel or something. So they don't want to frighten us. The aliens are so advanced. They're able to project thoughts into our head and make it seem like we're seeing this angel, this warmth, this kindness. But in reality, what's standing before them is like a seven foot ball sack. 65 feet. 65 foot ball sack named Gleep Glorp. <laughs> I would say that has some plausibility to it. However, like I said before, religion was banned in the Soviet Union. So these people had no attachment to angels at all. Well, maybe they, they did. Still they just know what locked they are. it away. Hey, what does that mean? They're banned. I was still like, I'm sure there's. I mean, there was hidden stuff underneath like the government, but all in all, Shit wasn't really popping off there that much for years. I want to I want to say like around 100 years, slightly less than 100 years. So people could be born and not have any affiliation with it whatsoever. So I'm reaching out to the audience members. Tell us what you think it is, because I'm at a loss for it. And it's very intriguing. Do you believe in God? So if you do believe that these are angels. There obviously has to be an opposite, right? Many people say this next creature is the opposite of an angel. So I do have something that is the opposite. The Jersey Devil. Now this creature is scary. <laughs> 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 huh. 
The end. The end. <laughs> this legendary creature is said to inhabit the forest of Pine Barrens in South Jersey. Now, Pine Barrens Forest approximately covers 1.1 million acres of land. It's a pretty dense forest. It occupies 22% of New Jersey's total land area. I didn't even know New Jersey had forests. Oh, they, oh, boy, do they. <laughs> They're I everywhere. Thought it was a, I thought it was a little dirty coastal town that was just like, Hey, give me a Tony, give me yeah, a meatball. Hey, hey, give me your khakis. Yeah. Yeah, it's just shady people, dude. Yeah. Everyone from Jersey, shady. I don't trust you. Rebel said that. <laughs> Not me. Damn. Let it be. Let it be known. You'd be like people from Jersey being like, "Hey, fuck off, man!" Hey, the yeah, fuck, fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> T-shirt time. Say hello to your mother for me, I. Right? But fuck you. All right, we're getting like New York. That sounds like Miami a little bit too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so they're all the same. Guy, dude. <laughs> now the Jersey Devil is also described as a flying biped with hooves. It also has short little T-Rex arms. I have claws. <laughs> Biped, does that mean he uh, swung both ways? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> the Jersey Devil is known to have a horse goat-like head with horns and a forked tail that comes out the backside, hence given the name the Jersey Devil. Now, the story of the Jersey Devil started way back in the 1700s with a woman named Jane Leeds, also known as Mother Leeds. The legend goes that after Mother Leed had already 12 kids and found out she was pregnant with a 13th kid, she began cursing the child in frustration, crying that the kid would be a devil. Now in 1735, on a stormy night, thunder creeping in, lightning striking, the 13th child was born. The child, at first, appeared to be a normal child. Everybody gathered around, taking a look. But then the child began to turn. The 13th child turned into a creature with hooves, a goat's head, bat wings, and a forked tail. Growling and screaming, the child beat everyone with its tail while flying up the chimney and running out into the forest. Sounds like a regular child. In some versions of the old tale, Mother Leeds was apparently a witch, and the child's father was the devil himself. Hey, it's a Lucifer! <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, come get the meatball! Hey! I don't know why he's Italian. I'm the devil! Hey, I'm the devil! What do you want from me? What do you expect? I'm so annoyed right now, dude. Come around here to my family. You expect... <laughs> With the devil spawn, not to behave violent. Fuck it's out of here. What do you want? It's hell. Come <laughs> it's on. Hey. Do you think people talk like that in 1735? <laughs> yes. Like it yes. went all the way back then still? Still still that Italian lineage. Just riding deep within Jersey. She's a witch. Burn her. Hey, what do you want? Burn her. <laughs> Fucking burn her. <laughs> All right, I'm done, dude. So I can see the one Jersey person like, we don't talk like that. Yeah, there's people in Jersey for sure that are like, um, ah, straight faced right now, not laughing at anything. Now, with the basic lore established, there's been many sightings of the Jersey Devil throughout the history of time. Commodore Stephen Decatur was visiting his Hanover Mill while checking out his cannonballs, when he spotted a flying creature above their mill, as he began to panic, he commanded everybody to shoot the cannons at this flying creature and apparently hit it, but nothing happened. The creature flew away, went back into the woods. Joseph Bonaparte, elder brother of Napoleon, also claimed to see the Jersey Devil while hunting on his property in Bordentown, New Jersey in 1820. In 1840, farmers claimed that the New Jersey Devil was killing their livestock 
reported screams from the forest could be heard and that was kind of the telling sign. A lot of people said that they wouldn't always see the Jersey Devil, but a lot of times would hear screaming coming from the woods. Now in 1909 is when things began to escalate quite a bit. There was a wave of sightings between January 16th, 1909 and January 23rd, 1909. Hundreds of people came forward with the reports of being attacked by a creature with a forked tail and horns. The newspapers began to report on this, with one article claiming that this creature attacked a trolley car. Now, the widespread news coverage obviously instilled fear into all the locals, which prompted a week-long stay-at-home period. People did not go to work, children did not go to school, Vigilante groups were out trying to help the law enforcement find this creature or person or whatever they thought it was at that time. They grabbed hundreds of hunters and roamed the forest in a straight line, never found anything. During this period, the Philadelphia Zoo came out with a flyer that had a $10,000 reward for the creature. If you brought it back alive, and they would showcase it in the zoo. And that reward is still open to this day and has yet to be claimed. Dude, I'll take that thing down. A plastic lounge hunting club where we hunt cryptids. Now, in 1909, after the craze died down, the sightings did not stop there. In 1925, a local farmer shot an unidentified animal as it attempted to steal his chickens. He apparently photographed that animal and showed it to over a hundred people and nobody could identify what that creature was. Now since then, there's no record of this picture. This is all hearsay. It's well documented and other people have heard this to, through several different family lines. In 1937, an unknown animal with red eyes was seen in a downtown area in Pennsylvania. So now it's starting to begin to spread quite a bit. The theory is there's multiples of these creatures and they have sons of bread and continue to have others. In 1951, a group of boys hiking in the woods in Gibbstown, New Jersey, claimed to see monsters, two of them, that fit the same exact description as what we've been saying the whole time. Biped creature, bat wings, horns, goat-like head with a forked tail. Now these continue and continue. Nobody's officially seen this cryptid or gotten footage of it. But it's become such a main part of the New Jersey culture that actually, fun fact, the, the current hockey team in New Jersey is named the New Jersey Devils. So what do you guys think? You think New Jersey Devils a real thing? People being terrorized by a creature in the woods? Or could this be something else? Maybe a giant bird or something. I think it's just a dude that gets drunk every now and then. He just likes to get in the shit. I think he like wh he wears wings. He wears wings, gets in a full costume, gets at least like a few things of schnapps, and then goes in. Just has like a binge oh, peppermint night. Sh peppermint schnapps. Peppermint schnapps and goes in, and the whole night is just a binge. It's just like my neighbor that I saw this morning. He was sleeping in his car with his windows rolled down. <laughs> it was 20 degrees outside Fahrenheit. He probably had a rough night, man. He had a very rough night. This is what I'm trying to say. Maybe he's the Jersey Devil. Do you think if we could fly, do you think people would, it would still like regulate like space like that? Like you can't fly around like while drinking? Oh, yeah, probably. If you just like, like literally just fly around. Maybe not like super high, like, but just like maybe like 20. 30 feet i always think about that though like i always wish like we could fly but like how dangerous that shit would be like especially if you were like one of the only people that could ever fly you had some sort of power and you're just like you always see in movies people just like going up wherever they want and, like having fun there's so much shit in the air dude there's like power lines helicopters planes fucking anything man drones weather balloons you dude there's so much shit in the sky. You're you're hitting something. It's like that one guy, that one guy that's on a jetpack and he's literally miles above the earth. And yeah. He's the only. It's just a one person jetpack and people. It's like a phenomenon. He's basically a cryptid at this point. 
Yeah, I've seen that guy on TikTok. It's become like a national threat. People will be flying around in a plane, and they look out, and it's just a dude on a jetpack just chilling there. Like, what's up? Yeah. I mean, I think the 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 most logical thought process I have with it is you take all the roads that are like currently there still and you just go like 20 feet up and then you make like new barriers that are above like all the power lines. Yeah, there you go. Back to the future, too. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like the same like path, but we're just flying. You're not running into all that shit. Speaking of flying shit, Grits, what, what do you got, man? From the mid 1960s to present day, a small town in West Virginia has been terrorized by what some would call a demon. This demon would turn out to go by the name Mothman, coined by the locals. Rewind in time to 1966, Steve and Mary Millette and Roger and Linda Scarberry are driving around in a car. They're on their way to park at a lover's lane type deal where the locals of Point Pleasant, West Virginia would go to make out. The two married couples pull into what is officially known as McClintic Wildlife Management Area. What it actually was is a bunch of underground bunkers disguised with grassy hills, kind of like a hobbit house. And in these bunkers, they would store TNT during World War II to hide them from overhead planes. Now abandoned in the 60s, the locals of this small West Virginian town would just use this area to make out. Steve, Mary, Roger, and Linda are parked next to the TNT storage area. It's dark, their lights are off, and they're getting busy. When all of a sudden, a loud thud is heard. Kind of like if you drop something heavy next to your feet, you can feel the ground move, only 10 times bigger. The couples stopped what they were doing, and they're looking out all the windows, but nothing is visible because it's pitch black out. Remember, this is a spot where people would go to look at the stars and be alone. They're looking out all the windows left and right. They can't make anything out except Linda points to the front of the windshield and she says, what is that? What the four people seen is terrifying. It was two giant glowing red eyes the size of dinner plates. The eyes seemed to be about 10 foot in the air and only about 10 feet away from the car. Frantically reaching for the headlight switch, Roger pulls it. And as soon as the high beams kick in and the headlights turn on, what the light in the darkness revealed was even more terrifying. The two couples described what they seen as a 10 foot tall winged beast with glowing red eyes and no discernible head meaning that its eyes were basically in its chest. Roger immediately starts the car, whips it into drive, and peels the fuck out of there. They continue down the county road, going exceedingly fast to get away from this creature. Mary looks out the passenger side window. She notices the winged beast flying alongside the car, only about 10 or 15 feet away, up in the air, eyes locked onto the car. Roger stomps on the gas even more, and they hightail it back to Point Pleasant, which is about six miles south of where they were. Terrified and frightened, the couple screech into the sheriff's station parking lot, throw it in the park, and Roger books it in, pleading frantically with the deputy on duty, describing exactly what they seen. This would go down in history to be the first ever recorded Mothman sighting in Point Pleasant, West Virginia one of hundreds of thousands. After that day, the calls and reports about Mothman sightings poured in. Not too far away was an avant-garde journalist working for a Playboy magazine at the time who went by the name of John Keeley. John Keeley was in the area doing reports on UFO sightings, coincidentally enough, when he heard rumors about these Mothman sightings. Intrigued, John books a hotel room in Point Pleasant and begins his stay in preparation for questioning the locals. Over the next few weeks, John's findings would go down in history and also help him to write his book, The Mothman Prophecies, which you may have heard of as it was turned into a film. John interviewed dozens and dozens of locals. These locals 
sightings and eyewitness accounts would range from auditory experiences, hearing loud screeching outside their windows, seeing strange images appear on their TV screens while they were watching TV, physically seeing the Mothman itself outside of their homes, outside of their windows, seeing the bright glowing red eyes in the darkness, or seeing the Mothman fly across the sky, such as two grave diggers in the area that were working the midnight shift. These grave diggers were doing what they do, digging graves, and they hear a loud screeching sound. They look up, and sure enough, a 10-foot-tall winged beast is roaring across the sky above them. These two grave diggers did exactly what Roger did. They threw it in a high gear right to the sheriff's station and reported their account. Only by this time, their report was lost in a sea of reports of Mothman. Drawing some similarities in these eyewitness accounts and experiences, John began to notice a pattern. Many of these people who claimed to have seen Mothman or had any sort of experience involving Mothman all claimed to have the same thing happen to them. Their eyes were burning after seeing things. Many of them went to get checked out by the local doctor and were diagnosed with conjunctivitis and also ultraviolet ray burns. Some of these people who heard things outside their house had similar things happen to their ears in the likes of a concussion. Their ears would seep blood and they wouldn't be able to hear for a while. Probably the scariest thing that would happen to people are the phone calls, including John himself, people in the area in Point Pleasant would receive anonymous phone calls. They would pick up their phone, say hello, and nothing would be on the other end except for some light static. After saying hello a couple times, a voice would come on the line. This voice sounded shaky and distant. Hey, it's me! <laughs> Almost otherworldly. Sometimes the voice would just breathe into the phone. Other times it would say things, numbers. Of these numbers, one of the numbers was repeated over and over again to many people, 46. Now, like I said, John himself received an anonymous phone call just like this. And his phone call was like many others. He heard the number 46 coming from the distant, ominous voice on the other end of the phone. Now, a lot of these phone calls are recorded. However, many of them just have the static I'm describing. Not a lot of them have any voices. Now, almost a year had gone by of people describing these horrifying events and eyewitness accounts of Mothman sightings. It would appear numerous times to many people, ultimately terrorizing Point Pleasant. But it all culminated to a head on December 15th, 1967. A bridge that connected Point Pleasant to the outside of town, known as the Silver Bridge, built in 1928, was packed full of cars of people trying to get in and out of town because of the holidays. There was also an accident on the other side of the bridge, which made traffic even worse. Traffic being gridlocked on the Silver Lake Bridge spelled disaster as the cables from the bridge began to snap one by one. The suspension bridge collapsed into the water below, which was frigid cold. Car after car nosedived into the water. Families, husbands, wives, children opening their doors trying to swim out of the frigid cold water. Christmas presents laid scattered and floating among the wreckage. Many families suffered losses. Many people died. But would you guys guess how many people died? 46. 46 people died in the Silver Bridge collapse. Some drowned, some crushed by the falling cars. After this, John had had enough. He couldn't take any more prophecies. He couldn't take any more sightings. He hightailed it home and began to write his book. However, things did not settle down in Point Pleasant, and it would turn out that they never will. Point Pleasant to this day has turned the Mothman phenomena into a celebration of sorts. There are memorabilia shops and countless community events, but the sightings still occur. Some more sinister than others, they're still happening. As to what Mothman is, we only know from what people think. There has been no solid evidence of what Mothman could be, deeming him 
another cryptid. What do you think Mothman is? Do you think he's some winged monster from another world? Perhaps a demon. Some might think he's just a big bird. But some might think he has a connection to death and tragedy itself, predicting horrible events throughout the world. If you hear of a large tragedy, look up Mothman sightings, because I bet there's at least one that happened right before it. Was he there at 9-11? Probably. <laughs> Shit, dude, he was in the plane. He was the pilot. The Mothman was sighted in a photograph during the aftermath of 9-11. I wonder if he's specific to America. I don't think so. I think people have been seeing him all over the world. Why he terrorized Point Pleasant is up for debate. Maybe he is like a timeshare there. Yeah. In West Virginia. Yeah. Wonder how much that cost. Can we do an outro with a Mothman song? Yeah. All right, I'll start it. Mothman. Fucking Mothman. 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 Mothman! Sorry, hit us on the solo. Uh, Great! <laughs> Mothman! Boom. Alright, we'll go boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Oh, wait, hold on. Boom, boom, boom. Tell me the Mothman. <laughs> Blind as fast as I can. Uh, Just in your car on the road. And I'm about to explode! Boom, 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 boom. Yeah! <laughs> that was a good one. That was good. I like that. If you have seen or heard of any cryptid in your area, call us at a join the Discord in the channel description below and share your personal experiences with the rest of the community. We read every single thing posted there as well as chat with y'all offline. You guys are the sexiest bunch of people this side of the Mrs. Sappy. Shout out to our members. You guys are the homies. You're not a member. Hit the join button down there. Support us. Hit the join button. You appreciate the content. We appreciate you. Even if all you can do is subscribe, hit that subscribe button, like the video, comment down below. Goodbye.